Fuse application bundles or fabs are a new way of packaging and deploying jars in an OSGI container. They are designed to be significantly easier to use than conventional OSGI bundles. To understand the rationale for fabs, we first need to ask why are OSGI bundles difficult to use? Recall what an OSGI bundle consists of. Fundamentally, an OSGI bundle is a jar file containing metadata embedded in the metainf/manifest.mf file. The metadata consists of bundle headers in the manifest.mf file. The import package header is particularly important. A bundle must declare all of its external dependencies by listing the relevant Java packages in the import packages header. Because it would be extremely impractical to create the list of import packages by hand, Maven provides a bundle plugin, which is capable of generating the import packages header automatically. The wildcard character in the import package instructions instructs the bundle plugin to scan the bundle's Java source code and add any package dependencies that it finds in the Java source. Unfortunately, it is not always possible to discover dependencies in this way. For example, dependencies on resource files or dependencies introduced by a dependency injection framework cannot be detected by the Maven bundle plugin. Because of this, the import package instruction can become rather complicated in practice. Another limitation of the OSGI bundle format is that the bundle does not know how to find and install its dependencies. That is, any dependencies must already be present in the OSGI container. The usual way to get around this limitation is to define a Kara feature for the bundle. The Kara feature enables you to define a bundle and its dependencies as a single deployment unit. So, to summarize, OSGI bundle packaging suffers from the following limitations. Some of the bundle's package dependencies cannot be discovered automatically. And you must define a Kara feature to enable a bundle to find its dependencies. Now, let's take a look at a fab and see how it addresses these limitations. First of all, what exactly is a fab? A fab is essentially a jar file that embeds a POM file in the standard location metainf slash maven slash groupid slash artifactid slash pom.xml. In practice, this means that any Maven project configured with jar packaging generates a fab. The basic idea of a fab is that it leverages the information about build time dependencies from the pom.xml file in order to figure out the deploy time dependencies. The fab does not just work out the first layer of dependencies. It also passes the pom files from the dependencies themselves in order to work out the transitive dependencies. Working recursively, the fab proceeds to figure out the entire dependency tree. After working out the tree of dependencies, the fab is converted into an OSGI bundle and deployed into the OSGI container. Now, there are a couple of different ways this fab to bundle conversion can be performed. The first option we consider is the case of non-shared dependencies. In this case, all of the dependencies are embedded inside the fab's bundle and are thus not shared with other OSGI bundles in the container. In effect, this deployment option is very like a web archive or WAR deployment. Install the fab using the OSGI install command with the fab colon URL prefix. As the fab is deployed, it works out the dependencies it needs by scanning the fab's pom.xml file. If the dependencies are not already available in the container, the fab downloads the dependencies from a Maven repository. After all of the dependencies are downloaded, they are packaged into the same OSGI bundle as the fab jar. The second option we consider is the case of shared dependencies. In this case, all of the dependencies will be packaged individually as OSGI bundles, enabling them to be shared with other applications deployed in the container. In effect, this deployment option is similar to the conventional way of deploying OSGI bundles. Install the fab using the OSGI install command. If necessary, the fab downloads the dependencies from a Maven repository. After all the dependencies are downloaded, 
they are each converted individually into OSGI bundles. To start a fab, use the fab start console command. When you invoke fab start on a fab bundle, you don't just start the fab bundle itself, but all of its transitive dependencies as well. Starting with the leaves of the dependency tree and working back to the fab itself. Now, in reality, when you deploy a fab, its dependencies are neither completely shared nor completely non-shared, but a mixture of shared and non-shared. By default, any dependencies that are plain jars are treated as non-shared, and any dependencies that are OSGI bundles are treated as shared. So the final option we consider shows the typical mix of plain jar dependencies and OSGI bundle dependencies. After installing the fab, and downloading all of its dependencies from Maven, the FAB runtime deploys the OSGI bundles as OSGI bundles and the plain jar dependencies are embedded in the FAB's bundle. When you start this hybrid FAB by invoking the FAB start command, first the bundle dependencies are started and then the FAB bundle. Finally, some advice on using FABs and Blueprint. There are two dependencies injection frameworks commonly used with Fuse ESB, Spring XML from SpringSource and Blueprint XML from the OSGI Alliance. Both of these frameworks can introduce dependencies that a FAB bundle is unable to detect. For example, consider a Spring XML file. The CAMEL and CXF namespaces are effectively hooks that introduce dependencies on other JAR files and bundles. Ideally, these dependencies would already be present in your project's POM file. But it is easy to forget to add them, because your Java source code would usually compile and build successfully anyway. With Spring, this would lead to a class not found error at deploy time. A Blueprint XML file can also introduce dependencies to namespaces. For example, this Blueprint fragment introduces dependencies to the CAMEL, CAMELCXF, CXF, and Jaxpress namespaces. Unlike Spring, however, the Blueprint framework is capable of resolving these dependencies at deployment time. Blueprint is capable of dynamically importing any packages it needs at runtime. As long as those packages are already deployed in the container, Blueprint will find them and import them into the bundle class space. So, in conclusion, the ideal strategy for packaging your applications in Fuse ESB is to combine the benefits of FABs and the Blueprint framework, making deployment as easy and reliable as possible.